Welcome back to another video today we'll be listening to part 7 of what if Issei was almost killed by Rias Grimori don't forget to like share and subscribe for more now let's begin. Chapter 31 What does the fox say? Scene, Yusaka's castle, Kyoto Japan, backyard garden. Ooh, are you gonna show me some of your dragon powers, Papa Kun? Issei looks at little Kuno as her bright smile is extremely infectious. Returning the smile, the brown-haired teen ruffles the little princess's hair and ears a bit. Sit back and watch, Kunuo-chan, I will show you some true Opai dragon power. The drag interrupts Issei's thoughts. Partner, what are you doing? Issei relays his thoughts back to the red dragon. The poor kid, well, from the looks of it, she doesn't seem to have a father figure around. I'm not saying that I am anything special, but I want to entertain her a bit. I think she is depressed. I felt something like that back when I was helping her save her mother. I don't know what it is about this kid, but I really feel like I might make a difference. I know it sounds arrogant, but, I just. The drag interrupts. Partner, I understand. You don't have to explain any further. Just do me one favor. Issei tilts his head and internally nods. Make it a damned good show. Issei feels very encouraged at the words of his partner. Issei relays one more thought. Dedrag, you know, I kind of think of you as my best friend. You've been with me through a lot and I just wanted to thank you for everything. Seriously, you're the best. Dedrag didn't respond and to be perfectly honest, nothing really needed to be said as Issei's feelings were successfully conveyed. Shaking his head from his thoughts, Issei now looks at a wide-eyed Kuno who had a blush on her face. Issei also noticed the two guards from before, wearing fox masks they also seemed to be interested as they had their spears on the ground and were sitting next to Kuno on the wooden walkway near the main garden. Issei smirks and throws his fist into the air. Opai Dragon Balance Breaker. After a large and red flash, we can see Kuno and the two guards, all three clapping their hands. Scene, Yusaka's meeting room. I will explain, everyone please just calm down. Also, Know that I do this only to protect the boy, there is nothing malicious in my intentions. Ophis, Kuroka and Azazel all nod. Yasaka continues. The idea hit me the moment I personally intervened in the apprehension of the Hyodo boy. As he lay on my bed, I could feel the conflicting energies within him. The damage to his soul was extensive. If it weren't for Kuroka, Issei more than certainly would have perished, but that wasn't the extent of it all. No, a problem still exists one that I was able to repair. The problem lay in Issei's humanity, quite literally. He was human, the moment I removed the pieces while Kuroka repaired the damage. Because of this, and because of the fact that Issei has achieved the level he has with his sacred gear, his body would eventually fail him as the power of the Red Dragon Emperor, not only unlocked, but now amplified, would rip his human body into pieces, even if he were never to use it again. So, Kuroka now points at Yasaka, I knew it, you did something. I felt a change in Issei's aura not shortly after the first healing session. I thought maybe it was because he was just human, as you said. But the aura was clearly different. Ophis nods and speaks up. The nine-tailed fox demon is known for having all of its main energy, divided into their tails. Considering that fact and the fact that this fox likes to keep her own tails wrapped around my Issei, one could indeed speculate many things. Azazel puts everything together and takes a deep breath. You're turning him into a yukai. You're turning Issei into a fox. Yasaka frowns and nods slowly. Ophis has a blank face. Kuroka yawns, is that all? I was hoping for something more juicy, oh well. Azazel's jaw is, agape. Yasaka blushes a bit, Issei, my little fox. Scene, Grimori Estate, Serezex, please stop pacing. Just because he isn't answering your calls, that doesn't mean he is up to something. Stop jumping to conclusions. The pacing devil looks back at her wife and shakes her head. Maybe Azazel is talking to Issei right now, that's why he won't answer. Graphia shakes her head, Sirzex, what makes you assume anything of the sort? The redheaded stops pacing and thinks for a moment. Maybe I am losing my sense of reason. I just, I just, Graphia tackles Sirzex into a powerful hug. Whispering in her king's ear, Sirzex is shocked at the sudden burst of emotion during work hours. Don't worry Sirzex, don't worry my love, all will be well. After all, 
we are competing in the Opai Dragon Hunt as well. Even if we don't find him first, it is almost guaranteed that another team will. The odds are in our favor, dear. Sears X nods and returns his queen's hug. Seen, Yasaka's backyard garden. We can see the red and gold clad red dragon emperor in all of his glory. Everyone seemed to be in shock however as not a single person was moving. Issei was standing in the middle of the garden, still with his one arm held above his head, however he was looking behind his back and toward the ground. Not one, but two tail-like appendages were visible from the back of Issei's scale mail. Finally deciding that this was odd, Issei attempts to move both of his tails. To his surprise, using his new second tail was no different than using his first one. Kuno then spoke up which caused Issei to lose interest and look back at the fox princess. Issei, you have two tails now. Issei rubs the back of his helmet, I guess, so. Kuno claps and laughs very loudly. The two guards join in and begin to clap as well. Issei looks at his gauntlet. Dedre, what in the actual hell, man? Were you gonna tell me about this at some point, or just wait for me to find out? The gauntlet glows red. Partner, don't ask me. I don't even have the slightest of clues. Issei facepalms. Chapter 32, Magic of the Fox, Scene, Yusaka's Castle, Kyoto, Japan, Backyard Garden. Issei plays video games here and there. One of his favorites is Fallout. Remembering how the radiation, in that game, could cause mutations like two heads and such. Issei began to think the worst. Deciding that this was too strange, Issei had to go and find the only person he knew that could explain this second tale. Trying to maintain his composure, as under the helmet, Issei looked rather worried, Issei walked up to the three, while batting both of his tails against the wind, causing snapping sounds. Kunuo smiled again, you can make him make cool sounds too. Ooh, ah, before the two guards and Kunuo started clapping again, Issei placed his hand, softly, on the head of the fox princess. Say, kiddo, I need to talk to your mom, rather, the guy in the room with her, really fast. But this was really fun. We can do more, later, okay. Kunuo smiled and both guards presented Issei with limited edition Opai Dragon comic books with black pens. Understanding and wanting to speak with his sensei rather urgently, the boy quickly signs both comic books and hands them back to the still-sitting guards. One last quick pat on the fox princess's head and Issei ran back into the house, still with his armor on. Scene, Yusaka's meeting room. I was planning on telling him later about it. After all, hasn't he been through enough already? It's not like I would be able to hide it from him, not for long anyway. Yusaka is sipping some green tea as she leans back in her chair. And that's really all of it. I am not ashamed of what I did, nor will I apologize, especially to that brat, ruin, as in ruin the poor life. Of my precious Issei, Princess, Bitchface Grimori, Kuroka, Azazel and even Ophis all drop their jaws. The fox queen continues spocking as she flares her power in anger. All nine of her tails were extended and radiating blue flames. Foo 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 foo, that's right, I called the bitch out for what she is, a contemptuous CU. Knock knock knock, the flames and oppressive aura all but disappear in an instant as Yusaka's tooth and angry frown, now turned back into her, happy, crescent-shaped smile. Speaking in a calm and proper tone, the woman speaks up. Yes, who is it? Issei speaks up which makes everyone in the room twitch. Hey, Yusaka-san, I was wondering if I could come in, I have a question for Azazel-sensei. It's pretty important. Nodding her head, the fox queen walks to the door herself and slides it open. Issei shudders but then decides to formally bow. Sorry about the armor, but I gotta show Azazel something. He is halfway down as Yusaka's arms grasp both of his shoulders and pull him into the room. Before he knew it, Issei was standing in front of Yusaka while facing the rest of the group in the room. The sliding door closed shut. Azazel looks over at Issei's armor and notices something out of place. Standing from his chair, the fallen angel rushes over toward the red dragon emperor in a very ungraceful manner. Almost tripping, the angel stops and crouches down near Issei's behind. Interesting, very interesting. Azazel now looks up at Yusaka and winks. This causes the fox queen to shudder, especially when she notices the twin tails. Kuroka and Ophis both stand from their seats and crouch on each side of Azazel. 
This annoys Issei as everyone seems to be looking at his butt. Kuroka attempts to grab one of the dragon tails, however Issei, in further annoyance proceeds to lightly whip at the Neko's hand. Hey, I just wanted to touch it. Kuroka is holding her red hand. For some reason, this makes Yasaka grin. The only thought going in her mind, I would do the same, if someone just reached for one of my tails. It's super rude. Proud of Issei's reaction, Yasaka starts patting one of Issei's shoulders in a proud kind of manner. Issei looks behind him and smiles behind his helmet. I bet she has problems like this, all the time. Awesome, at least someone gets me. Wait, doesn't Kaneko sis, Erm, Kuroka, doesn't she also have two tails? So, maybe it's just a power thing. So, not radiation. Well, time to ask the know-it-all. Looking down now at Azazel, Issei asks. Well, is it bad? Am I turning into a mutant or something? Azazel stops staring at the tails and looks up at Issei. Well, no, it's not bad. However, you might call it a mutation of sorts. Issei gains a few sweat marks on his helmet. Ophis speaks up. So, this is fox magic. The entire room goes quiet. Yasaka has a blush and worrisome look. Kuroka just wants to bat at the tails with her claws like a cat. Azazel pulls out his pack of cigarettes while facepalming. Issei looks back at Ophis and tilts his head. Ophis likes this and smiles while tilting her own. This threw the boy off guard as what Ophis just did was super cute. Erm, Ophis, the infinite dragon god interrupts. No, Issei, you will call me, Ophis-chan. Issei pauses for a moment, then rephrases his words. Ophis-chan, so what did you mean when you said fox magic? Ophis turns her gaze toward Yusaka as her smile fades. Chapter 33, What's Love Got to Do With It? Scene, Yusaka's meeting room, Kyoto, Japan. Issei-kun, Issei nods while looking very confused. Yusaka continues, I was going to tell you something important, but I wanted you to heal a bit before I said anything. Azazel stands up and pats Issei on his other shoulder, as Yusaka still has her hand, gripping the boy's right shoulder. Issei turns, his gaze toward his sensei. What aren't you guys telling me? Yasaka releases her hold and moves her hand toward the teen's helmeted chin. She does this while softly turning Issei's head back toward her. Looking directly into the fox's eyes, behind the emerald eye protection, Issei doesn't move. I only told them, just now, Issei. So, would you be upset to know, if perhaps, I might have, well, changed you? Issei thinks about it for a moment. Looking down at the queen's tails, beautiful and soft, Issei thought harder. Then it hit him all at once. Ophis said it herself, this is fox magic. Looking back up at Yasaka, Issei asks the question. So, are you trying to say that I am not just a human? Yasaka nods while frowning. Issei, it was a foregone conclusion that if you remained human, after the evil pieces were removed, Dedrag, of no fault of his own, mind you, would eventually kill you. Dedrag interrupted loudly, I would never. How dare you imply something as cruel as that? Fox. Yasaka then grasps Issei's gauntlet arm with both of her hands while shaking her head no. Dragon Emperor, as I said early, it would be no fault of yours. You see, ever since Issei unlocked his abilities with you, the spiritual burden of the power in which you contain needed to be held in place with a body, a body stronger than just a human. Azazel nods and speaks up. You see, kid, sacred gears only unlock once a human is resurrected that being a devil or angel or, anyway, point is, Yusaka, once again, she saved your life, kiddo. The drag remained silent, Issei remained silent, Yusaka, Kuroka and Azazel all looked at the red-clad emperor as he simply stood while looking at the ceiling. Then, Issei spoke, I see, a red glow permeates the room as Issei's armor is recalled, leaving the teen standing where he was. He was still looking toward the ceiling with a blank look, speaking again, the room flinched in anticipation. So, Yusaka-sama, you did something like Rias, you made me into a yokai. So, is it like devil stuff? I am basically your slave now. Yusaka breaks down in tears. Kuroka sees this and rushes over toward her new friend. Issei lowers his head, noticing what had just happened. Azazel is quiet as he lights up a cigarette. Kuroka places both of her arms around Yusaka, as the Nako hugs the fox from behind while staring directly into Issei's eyes. 
Seeing those yellow eyes, seeing the black slits for pupils, dilated, Issei couldn't look away. It reminded him of a memory involving Kaneko. Kuroka spoke up in a very clear and down-to-earth manner. Hyodo, let me ask you something. Issei nods while maintaining a stoic face. Has Yusaka-sama done anything, and I mean, anything, to imply that you are her slave in any sort of fashion? Has she ordered you to complete contracts or fight in some stupid arena? Issei shakes his head, implying, no. Long story short, Sekiryu Tikun, Yusaka is in love with you. Yusaka's eyes widened in shock. Kuroka has a grin on her face. Issei's jaw drops to the floor. Azazel begins to choke on his cigarette as he attempts to repeat what Kuroka just said. Choke choke, L, love. Choke, Issei, cough cough, you stud, you. When were you gonna tell your sensei that you were eloping with the fox queen of Kyoto? What a scandal, Azazel begins to chuckle. Yasaka's face has turned three shades of pink as she can't look at anyone in the room. Ignoring his sensei's stupid comments, Issei looks at Yasaka, who is struggling to get away as the Kuroka holds her in place. Issei grows a warm smile and speaks up. Is that what this was about? Yasaka, the fox stops struggling and looks up at the team. Why? Why would you want to love a pervert like me? I don't have any redeeming qualities. I won't even begin to add my own personal issues into the pot, but let's just say that I am damaged goods. Issei places a hand over his bandaged head. And I don't mean just this. Yasaka, Kuroka and even Azazel are completely frozen in place from what they just heard. Looking around the room, the team continues. You are beautiful, Yasaka, powerful and wise too. You deserve someone who is much better than the likes of me. Issei looks down at the ground. Ophis was the next to speak. What Rainer and Ramori did to you, that is unforgivable. You have been dealt some terrible fates as if they were cards in a game of poker. I have seen many things throughout the ages of time. I have seen wickedness, evil, cruelty in such degrees that one such as yourself would go quite mad as a result of witnessing such atrocities. With that, Hyodo Issei made Kun, I will not allow you to tarnish your own well-being with thoughts of doom. Issei looks back up and turns his gaze toward the infinite dragon god, who was casually sitting in one of the chairs. That's right, Issei, you have a great deal of many qualities that most would find admirable. Rainer is dead, Issei, she is dead. This is important for you to understand. Rias, she will never lay her filthy hands on you, again. For if she attempts such a thing, her fate will be sealed. Ophis now grins. This makes the entire room shudder. Yasaka then decides she needs to say something as she was finally able to get over her own emotional megaton of a nuke. Issei. The teen turns his gaze from the grinning Ophis, to a very sad looking Yasaka. I, I love you. I felt guilty at first for wanting someone as young as you. It's why I never said anything. But, as I said before, the very moment that I was released from that stupid spell. Seeing you there with my daughter. It was love at first sight. I don't want anything from you. I just want you. You never have to fight again or suffer any more pain. I just want you here. By my side, along with my daughter. The fox queen looks behind her at a smiling Kuroka. She then looks toward Ophis, who has turned her grin into a look of intrigue. Nodding to herself, the fox Yukai continues. Yes. I want you here, safe and sound. Kuroka and Ophis are also welcome to be a part of this family, as they want nothing more than to protect you, just as much as I do. Don't you understand? You've done enough for the supernatural world. You've prevented innocent bloodshed and also took part in creating peace within the biblical factions. Issei, you've done enough. Not knowing how to feel from this declaration, Issei can't help but instinctually smile warmly. Azazel then decided to throw in a few words. I'll take it back, kid. Not only have you conquered the heart of a very powerful Yukai spirit, but also the hearts of the infamous Kuroka SS class devil and the infinite Ouroboros dragon. Issei. This is a monumental feat of achievement. Azazel nods proudly as he pats Issei's head. That's the security for ya. Chapter 34. Truth. Truth and more truth. Scene, Yasaka's meeting room, Kyoto, Japan. Blushing as he has never blushed before, Issei just wants to hide under a blanket or something. Is that all they want from me? But, that is so easy. Looking into her eyes, it's like I could just get lost in them. 
That's what I originally thought about, President, those blue-green eyes, but now. But now, this beautiful and loving woman saves my life. The only price she asks for is, is, is love. Deciding that he was going to break down anyway, as the multitude of thoughts ran through the boy's head, Issei again, instinctively, fell to his knees while embracing Yasaka, burying his face into her stomach. Aside from Ophis and Yasaka, both Azazel and Kuroka had their jaws agape. With his arms wrapped, around a stunned Yasaka, Issei held on tightly and began to cry. Azazel was about to light up another cigarette, that was until Yasaka pointed at the angel with a scowl. Assuming that he should have asked first, Azazel slowly puts the cigarette back into the box with a nervous smile. Now looking downward, Yasaka's scowl turns into a very intense and warm smile. Placing both of her arms behind Issei's head, the fox queen returns the embrace. Era, era, there, there my little fox, all will be well. Looking upward with tears in his eyes, Issei is able to say a few words before breaking down once again. Yes, I want to be with you too. Yasaka's eyes widen as she begins to blush. Issei lowers his head again and speaks into Yasaka's kimono. A muffled Issei speaks up. Please don't look at me. It's just, I never thought that, thought, that, erm, I just thought you wanted something else from me. Another flashy red dragon emperor to fill your ranks, I was so fucking wrong. Issei's muffles become silent as Yasaka bends down slightly, sliding the teen's head in between her generous assets. Era, era, that's enough from you, husband Kun. Yasaka smiles while maintaining her very red blush. Ophis tilts her head as if she is confused. Kuroka is simping over the drama as she looks to have somehow found a bag of popcorn. Snacking on the junk food, the Nako wipes a small tear from her eye. That was just perfect. Azazel on the other hand, let's just say that the angel is now sitting back in his chair while hiding his face in both of his hands. Deciding that he was tougher than this, Azazel discreetly wipes his face and looks back toward Issei and Yasaka. So, I hate to interrupt all of this, but I have been getting missed calls from Sirzex, 12 now, since I have been here. If I don't answer her, I am pretty sure she will get suspicious. Issei forces his way out of the Valley of Heaven and yells toward Azazel. Don't. Don't answer it, Sensei. Azazel looks puzzled as Yusaka and Kuroka both have their eyes widened a bit while sporting individual frowns of their own. I don't want to see any of them. They will all be pissed at me. I am sure Rias said something. I am sure they all took her side too. After all, they always do. I am just the pawn who, abandoned, his master at this point. I know it wasn't on the news, but I am sure they have labeled me astray at this point, am I right? Kuroka and Yusaka look back at Azazel in anticipation as this was a very good question. Azazel then smiles. Oh, is that what you think, kid? Well now it all makes sense. Okay, first off, you are so wrong my boy. Issei tilts his head, however Yusaka forces Issei closer and forces Issei's cheek against her chest. Era, era, you stay close now, the fox queen smirks. Azazel shakes off his thoughts regarding how lucky Issei is in this situation and continues his explanation. Let's talk about the peerage first, or rather, ex-peerage. Issei would turn his head to face his sensei to express his shock, however Yusaka's tail started to creep up and wrap around the teen once again. Don't get so excited, era era, you must maintain a sense of peace, my darling. Issei does his best to nod as he didn't want to be further, disciplined, by his new fiancé. Azazel continues, Rias is no longer in the position of high-class devil, as her sister, Sirzex, had the evil little thing, committed to the underworld's only mental institution. Sirzex then released the peerage of their contracts therefore making them, free devils. Issei, they are all worried about you. Also, Sirzex, well, Issei, we can talk about that another time. Yasaka stares at Azazel with a glare that could cut steel. No, era era, I think you will talk about this Sirzex matter here and now. Issei, attempts to look up however he is soon covered almost completely in tails as they tighten into a firm and soft hug. Relax husband Kun, Yasaka-sama has everything under control, you just relax and feel my tails. Azazel clears his throat, alright, maybe you already know this, maybe you don't, but, the angel is cut off when Ophis speaks over him. 
Sirzex and her maid have mated with Issei. They are a threat, Fox and Nako, we must ensure that he is not found by the likes of them. The entire room freezes as Issei lowers his head into the soft fur of Yusaka's tails, hiding his eyes. Yusaka now looks down at Issei with a scowl. Issei. Did they force you? Was it an order? Did they hurt you? Issei looks up at the fox queen with tears in his eyes. Shaking his head no, Issei begins to speak up. No, it was consensual. But it was supposed to be a complete secret, even Grafia took the time to place a barrier when we, well, yeah. I guess it was so that Rius would be happy, when and if she wanted to take my virginity. Issei looks back down into the fox tails. Azazel busts out laughing. Issei, you dog, you bang the ruler of the underworld and that goddess of a woman, Grafia. Issei, I am jealous, I am very jealous. You must tell me though, was it one at a time, or both? Issei speaks into Yusaka's fox tails as he forms a blush. D, both. Azazel now screams at the top of his voice. Woo woo, great job, my precious student. Kuroka facepalms herself. Yusaka has a blush while smiling. Then I won't need to train him much. Era, era, Issei then remembers what Ophis said. Ophis, how did you know? The black dragon stands from her seat and simply points at her nose. A mouse such as Sirzex would leave a very powerful spiritual residue, one in which upper beings, such as myself, can easily pick up by smell alone. Why do you seem troubled by others knowing such things? I do not understand. Issei buries his beet red face back into the fox's tails as Yusaka is now softly caressing Issei's hair. Era, Era, don't be embarrassed darling, it's nothing to be ashamed of. Ophis snaps her finger and speaks up with a half grin. Yes that is it, that is the emotion in which I was trying to place, thank you, fox. Yusaka winks back at Ophis, not a problem, Ophis chan the infinite dragon god thought about what she had just been called. Deciding that this was acceptable, Ophis nods and smiles. Yes, Fox Chan. Chapter 35, Era Era, Scene Underworld, Grimori Mansion. Tapping her foot against her desk, Sirzex looks to be slightly annoyed as she looks around the room while shrugging her shoulders in silent apologies. The large room consisted of a large and round table, which looked to be created out of some sort of bone material. Around this table, we see a plethora of individuals that all look familiar to us. Standing behind Sirzex was no other than her wife, Grafia. As always, she was wearing her usual main outfit while holding a tablet, prepared to take notes. Sitting on either side of Sirzex was Seraphal Leviathan and Ajuka Beelzebub, the super devil that created the evil peace system. Further down the table, we see the entire ex peerage of Rias Ramori. Asia, Gapser, Ravel, Xenovia, Irina, Akino, Kaneko and Kiba, all were sitting in chairs of their own. They all had different looks and emotions which consisted of encouragement, doubt and anticipation. Meanwhile, toward the opposite of the table, we see another group of people. Valley Lucifer, Riser Phoenix and Penemu are seen, while another chair, which is next to the secretary of the fallen angels, looks to be empty. Speaking up, the entire room turned their heads toward Sirzex. She is currently wearing a black blazer with a crimson red short skirt. She also is wearing red fishnet leggings while sporting a pair of crimson leather thigh high boots with stilettos. Wearing only a single piece of armor, which was located on her right shoulder, this armor looked to be some sort of homage to the Red Dragon Emperor. The shoulder pauldron was shaped like a Welsh style red dragon as the eyes showed the sigil of the Grimori seal. We will wait a few more minutes, then I suppose, we will start without him, the irresponsible governor. Scene, Yusaka Castle, Meeting Room. Azazel is facepalming at the scene that lay in front of him. He was not doing this out of shock or indecency, no, he was doing this out of sheer jealousy. As the scene pans out, we focus on what Azazel was starring at quite recently. Yusaka looked to be sitting on the mat with Issei in her lap. She was doing this as he was, still, completely wrapped, neck deep in golden and magical foxtails. Sitting beside the two, on either side, while leaning against an entrapped Issei, Ophis and Kuroka were taking turns, kissing the boy, softly on each of his cheeks. Ophis then spoke up, Nako, am I doing this, kiss you, correctly? I usually just go for the throat, this is new for me. Kuroka smiles and nods, Ophis returns the nod and the exchange continues. Finally, 
having enough of all of this insanity, Azazel shouts out. Alright, well, I have a thing to be at, so I gotta go. Looks like you are safe and sound, so that's all that matters for now. However, we really need to talk about the near future, well, in the near future, I suppose. Anyway, see you later, Issei. Looking toward his sensei, Issei had a look of desperation, almost like a playful, don't leave me, look, using pathetic puppy dog eyes. This only lasts a moment, as Issei's face is pulled into Ophis's. I like my way better. As the long French kiss scene between a bound Issei and the Ouroboros dragon continued, the governor of the fallen angels created a teleportation circle and vanished as he continued to facepalm himself repeatedly. As the circle dissipated, a banging sound could be heard, coming from the main sliding door. Then a voice to be heard, yelling from the other side. Papa Dragon Coom, you said you were going to play more. It's been forever now, time to come out. Mom has had enough time with Papa. All three girls stopped what they were doing as Issei faced the door. Yasaka then was about to speak up as her face looked as if she was ready to mother up and slightly reprimand her daughter for the rude behavior. That was until Issei spoke up. If you promise to be a good girl and wait outside patiently, I will come out in a few minutes. But if you pound on the door again, then no Dragon Emperor show, deal. Yasaka, Kuroka and even Ophis's jaws all dropped to the floor. For some reason, this increased the Fox Queen's desire to devour Issei, right here and now. Yasaka's face turned beet red and then she finally clears her throat and nods. Do what Dragon Kun tells you, Kuno. A pitter-patter of little feet can be heard from the opposite side of the door, scurrying off in the distance. Issei nods his head and slowly turns his head back toward the group of women. The teen was stunned when he noticed Yasaka, Kuroka and Ophis, all staring at him with what looked to be heart shapes in their eyes. Scene, Grimori Mansion. The main doors fly open revealing none other than Azazel. The angel looked rather grumpy at first, but that changed instantly the moment he thought of the situation in more detail. The kid is okay, thank, whatever, but yeah, he is safe. Now all I gotta do is pull off this little act. Can't let any of them know that I know anything. Easy sauce. Hell, maybe I might be able to pull a few strings to fix a few broken hearts. This will be interesting, very interesting. Issei, you make a lazy angel work too hard, you know that. Shutting the large twin doors behind him, Azazel waves at the group of people inside the room. Sorry I took so long. You wouldn't believe the traffic. Sirzex was the next to say something. What in all of nine hells are you babbling about? Sit your ass down so we can get this meeting started already. Azazel sweat drops. Thanks for watching like share and subscribe for the next parts one god in my storage.